welcome to Steam McDonald's Crafting. Now, I'm not sure if you saw the video where I made this out of a tin can, and it's for my pencils and pens, but I've decided it needs an extension. So what I've done is I've applied, I've got planning permission and all the building regulations for it, and I'm allowed to give it an extension. So I've got another can, and I'm gonna have this can there like that, and then a bit going in between. So I'm gonna have one for my scalpels, one for my pens and pencils, and this one here for little bobs and bits, and bits and bobs, and other bits and bobs. But I want these ones, this one to look like it's made out of stone. I've got my lolly sticks again, and some of these are just off cuts that I've had before, and I pondered how to make this look like stone, and I thought, well, the best way to maybe look, make this look like stone is to go over it with a stone, and that is kind of working. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just keep going over this. And now I've got all those marked up. There's quite a few marks in those. They'll probably show up a lot more once the paint's on them. I'm now going to cut those into block size. But before I do that, I need to make my little bit that's going in the middle. So I know where that's going. I'm only gonna make that out of some old cardboard that I've got here. I want these to kind of sit into it. So this comes up to it. If I draw around that there, I know that's going to fit into it really nicely. Cut this out. Double check that that still fits. Decide how wide I want that. I don't want it that wide. I think that would look too big. Oh yeah, far too big. So I'm gonna cut that down. I was going to do this bit once I've completed this. All I'm going to use to cut these with is my scissors or... Let's have a look. Scissors cut quite well, but they do have a tendency sometimes to split them. But my wire clippers cut them really well. Mark along there where I want those bricks, how wide I want those bricks. Like that. And then use my wire clippers... Making sure I get the blade right and squeeze that down, go around the other side, squeeze that down again, and then that should just come off there like that. And then I've got them all the same size. Well, I've painted my tin now and that's all dry. I've only given this one one coat because I am going to put these on and then I'm probably going to paint them and then grout in between the gaps as well. I think that might look quite nice. So all I'm going to be using is my glue gun to stick this on with. They glue on here exceptionally well. Make sure I go around leaving enough space to put the bottom on. So bring those down to that so that there's enough space. And then that's about the size of the gap that I'm going to leave. And then obviously when I go around the next route, I'm going to push those in like that as well. So it's staggered. And then I've got a little gap there. So I just need to put in a smaller one. And all I need to do is cut one down, fit in there. And there we go. That's going all the way around. And what I'm going to do is stagger the next layers. And then once I get to the top, I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Because I am going to put a couple of windows in and probably some doors as well. Well, I've finished putting all the bits on there now. And what I'm going to do is paint it. I've mixed up a little bit of grey paint just by adding a tiny bit of burnt umber, a tiny bit of black and a, some white. Because I want it to be kind of a stone colour. And now all I'm doing is going over and painting this up completely with it. Making sure I get in all of the little nooks and crannies. Once this is dry, I'm then going to finish it off using a little bit of texture and different kind of technique. Well, this is all dry now. And what I'm going to do is use this little bit of sponge with some of this burnt umber. Knock that off because I don't want it to be heavy, and then bunge some of this burnt umber onto each one of these little bricks like that. And I'm putting the dark colour on first, because I'm going to go over it with some lighter colour as well. There we go, so that's them all covered, and now all I'm doing is turning the sponge around and going over it with a much lighter grey colour. So they look a little bit more battle worn and not so brand new. And then once I've done the the grey colour like this all the way over, I will then go over with some little fleck of titanium white. So this is the titanium white. I don't want too much of this on it. Tiny bit to bring it out. Happy with that? I love working on silicon mat for painting. Now I'm gonna let that dry and then I will show you what I'm gonna do next. 
Well, now that's completely dry, what I'm going to do is give it two, probably three coats of satin varnish. And this is not only to seal it and to give it that bit of a sheen that some stone has, but it's also so that when I put the grout on, it's not going to absolutely destroy the work that I've already done. It will have a protective seal over it. It'll also bring out some of those highlights and some of the little dents as well that are in it. Well, this is all dry now and I think it's actually looking really good. Now, what I'm going to do is fill in all these little bits, and this is going to be a little bit of an intricate work, using some grout. And I've got some ready mixed grout here, I'm pushing it through, as you can see here, into there, and then letting it set up. I'm only taking a little bit out of the pot at a time, as I don't want it to dry out. And then I will go along this and then paint this probably a slightly different colour once it's all in there. Well, this is dry enough now. It's been drying for about 20 minutes and I don't want it to get completely dry, all this grout on here, because I want to be able to go over it with a tiny mixture of an off-white because I don't want it to be that brilliant white. So what I've done is mixed a bit of burnt sienna in with this titanium white. That should knock that right the way down. And now I'm going to add a little bit of water to that as well because I want it to be quite watery. And that should be off-white enough for me to be able to put in between. And I'm using a little brush for this, as you can see. And hopefully, I'm not going to be too shaky. There, so as you can see, that is, I think that is a better colour. And I'm just going to go around all the grout in now. And then all I've got to do is allow this to dry and then add the little bit that connects the two of them together, which I'll show you shortly. I've made my windows and door frames now for this and I'm really pleased with the way they've come out. So they're my little doors. All I did was made them exactly the same way as I made the wood effect on this one. And I'm going to glue these on using the hot glue. And then I can finish off the bit that goes between the two of them like that. I've also finished putting the windows in and the doors on that. And I just painted the inside black on that. And I think that's come out quite nice. And the doors are going to be kind of coming to the front. I've decided to do this with wooden fencing that's going to look like that going down each side and I'm going to put flagstones on this which is the connector and the flagstones are going to be made again out of these wooden lollipop sticks and I'm going to make them square this time rather than rectangular and put them all over here. I've covered this in white glow and what I'm doing is laying these flagstones down and the reason I've done it in glue is it will strengthen this cardboard considerably as well as allow me to glow these like little flagstones down. Now I'm leaving a gap in between all these and I'm putting them down a bit random. I'm also overlapping where I can because that way what will happen is I can go around and trim this up to fit to size as soon as it's dry. I'll also put a weight on this so it dries nice and flat. So all I need to do now is add a weight to that and I'll be using one of my old resin weights like that to let that dry. Well, this is all finished now. I'm really pleased how it's come out. So I've got one side here, which is the wooden side for my pens and pencils. And I've got this side, which is the brick side for my scalpels and things. And then in the middle, I can put my compass and my tweezers. And now I know where everything is, which is gonna make such a big difference for me because I'm always hunting for things. I'm, I love how this has come out. I like the two tones as well. I'm glad I didn't just make it all out of brick and I'm glad I didn't make it just all out of wood. I think it gives it a bit of variety. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. Hope you've enjoyed this project as much as I have. I've loved making this project and it will be really, really useful. I might even going forward make a whole castle using these techniques and have a go at doing that. If you'd like to buy me a coffee just to say thank you for any of my projects then the link for that is in the description below along with the link for every everything that I've used today. Take care, enjoy your crafting, bye!